Hi everybody, my name is Jenna Melvin and I'm a junior at UMass Amherst. 2020 has affected the entire world in many different ways, starting with COVID-19, this being a major election year, and then many personal events for all of us, including doing school and work online, losing jobs and internships, living at home with family very unexpectedly, and then we had many vacations and other important events to us that were either canceled or postponed. Because of all of these factors, many people have labeled 2020 as canceled, and I'm sure that many would also call this the worst year ever. Today, with my video, I hope to change the narrative surrounding 2020 for many people to allow them to see all of the good things that they can learn in 2020, and in general, find all of the positives in the bad. Let's get started. Pre-COVID and the government shutdown, there were many different activities that I used to love doing. These included planning the Women of Eisenberg Conference, a 400-plus person event held at the UMass Campus Center Auditorium, spending time with friends, going to sports games, traveling, and going out to eat. When the world shut down last March, I could no longer do so many of these things that had made me happy in the past. I had to work really hard to adapt to a new, more introverted lifestyle. I'm grateful to say I have grown so much the past year and became a much happier and more positive person. I'm now going to walk you through the six steps to take if you want to live a more positive lifestyle. Let's get started. One of the biggest lessons I learned in 2020 was the importance of taking advantage of unexpected opportunities. Last spring, my internship was canceled along with several vacations. The Women of Eisenberg Conference made the decision to go virtual in 2021, and many other events I was looking forward to got postponed. With all of these cancellations, several new opportunities came to light that I would not have had if life was as expected. One of my favorite things I did this summer was work as a Meals on Wheels driver. While it wasn't a prestigious business internship, it enhanced my communication skills and taught me how to be more empathetic and adaptable. I was able to work with my best friends too, which was an added bonus. Always remember to say yes to new ventures as long as you have time in your schedule to manage them. While this step to positivity is similar to the last, there is a different message here. Since an awesome opportunity might not always pop up the second something goes wrong, it's important to reflect on situations that appear bad and try to see the good in them. If this is too hard to do initially, pretend it is your friend's situation and think of what you might say to them. We tend to treat our friends better than we do ourselves sometimes. Give yourself the advice you would give a close friend. There is a light at the end of every tunnel. One of the hardest things for me to do pre-COVID was to be alone. While I was quarantining, reading, running, and painting were three key activities I turned to when I missed getting out of the house and seeing my friends the most. It's important to adopt hobbies that you are still happy doing alone because it gives you a way to be happy even if you aren't allowed to leave the house or if there are other factors restricting you from seeing your loved ones. Being at peace with being alone is a key step in our journey to positivity since it gives you a way to be positive no matter what the world outside of your house and outside of your mind is like. I know step four is something you hear everyone say, but I can't stress the reality of it enough. Stay off of your phone. Reading negative news cycles and hearing about what everyone in your Facebook network can and can't do is mentally taxing. Set time limits for social media apps and have someone else in your life set the passcode so you can't access them, no matter how tempting it is. Better yet, try deleting some of your most time-consuming apps for a week, then two weeks, and then see how long you can go without checking it. You'll be amazed when you realize Twitter is really not that important. Step five is probably one of the hardest things on this list to do. If you can do it, you'll be able to freely and happily live in the moment without stress or worries. Many people have different strategies to reframe their thinking style, including forcing yourself to smile, even when you don't want to, or if your smile is hidden behind a mask, forgiving past hurts, and worrying less. All easier said than done, but step six is a physical action you can take to relax and refocus your mind to live in the moment. 
Breathing exercises are super helpful in allowing your body to relax and allowing your brain to refocus, forcing you to live in the moment. My favorite is the one listed above, where you breathe in for 4 seconds, pause for 2 seconds, and breathe out for 4 seconds. Counting in a pattern is also super helpful for relaxation, a similar concept to counting sheep when you are trying to fall asleep. There are many different types of breathing exercises you can do, and contrary to my advice in step 4, many awesome ones live on our phones and other devices. If you're going to use your phone for anything, use it to improve your mental health. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned at least one new practice and that you'll apply it to this unpredictable year. Instead of accepting the toxic mindset that 2020 is a bad year, let's rewire our brains to see the positive in this year and see the positive in future situations to come. Thank you.